speaker, the awesome bass playing rock star, Mark White. I think he's somewhere in here, but I can't see. So um, thank you, yay. Super, so um, we are normalizing ourselves. We are all over the place. We are everyone. And um, Mr. White, would you please come up here and join me? Cause I, I need you. I need you to stand next to me when I say this. Cause this is, you know, such a pleasure to meet you, man. Yeah. One of the reasons why I love the annual conference every year is that I do get to prove to my mom that no, I am not the only black atheist. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Of course, we know this, but my mama, she just does not believe it, does not believe it. Oh, well. So thank you for helping me to make that point. Um, You're very welcome. Yay. And uh, take it away, my friend. I don't have my book with so Oh, yeah. You, you bet. Mm. You know where it is. Know, don't you I let me it. find it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All righty then. So this is my first time ever speaking in front of people. My very first time. My first time at an atheist conference. And uh, it's, it's kind of freaky, actually. But it's not that freaky. So I was going to church one day. I went to church one day. And we were sitting on that side of the church. And on that side of the church, there was a guy here with one leg. He always had, you know, he's in, always in a wheelchair. I think he was actually up on top of the stage. And it was a beautiful day, and the pastor was like, you know, he was talking all this stuff. And he, he looked over at Carthage, because this, this guy was like, amen, amen, amen. Everything he would say, amen. And, then, you know, we started to really notice him. So the pastor was like, you know what? We're going to pray for his leg to grow back. <laughs> so I want everybody in the room to put out their hands like this, and we're just going to ask God to do a miracle right now. And I was like, yeah, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> so, remember, I'm a Christian now. I believe in God. I love God. I got my Bible. I'm reading every day. But I already know in my mind that when I'm reading the Bible, all of Jesus' healings were always something that was on the outside. And whenever you see people, whenever I was watching Christians on television, it was always something I couldn't see, like on the inside. And so I'd never seen this before, so I'm waiting for his leg to grow back. And then I started thinking, like, how would it, would it just be like, poof? And then there would just be a leg, or would it be like, <laughs> and then I'm thinking, is the veins going to come first? Or is the bone going to come first? Is the skin going to come first? Maybe the skin would come first so you wouldn't have to see the inside. <laughs> that would be cool. And then, like, how does it, does it, does a foot start, or does it come from the leg? I mean, how does it all work? So we're sitting there, and you know, everybody's got their hand out like this, got their eyes closed, and I'm looking around, I'm like, man, this is unbelievable. So, of course, his leg didn't grow back. And I don't even, I can't, I wish I could remember exactly what the pastor said afterwards, how he even got out of that, but he skated himself out of that. Because I, for me, it was just like, this is, something is seriously wrong. So after that, my wife left me, and, uh, I'm in my house by myself in Houston, Texas, and I'm thinking something's not right. So the reason, before I got to that point, I had joined a church from, uh, after moving from New York City to Katy, Texas, I moved to New York City back to, I mean, down to Katy. And when I got saved again, I got saved again in Katy, I called my pastor in New York City, and I said, hey, I just accepted the Lord again. I want everybody in New York City to know, because I was in a church in New York City. I want everybody in New York City to know that I'm back in the Lord. You don't have to worry about me going to hell now. And he was like, you got to move back to New York right now. The Lord is telling me you have to move back to New York. And I was like, dude, I just bought a house and two cars, man. How am I supposed to do that? So I'm sitting there, and I was like, you know, I think everybody has knots in their stomachs for certain, you know, certain things, and I've only had three knots in my entire life, and I was one of them. And this knot wasn't caused because I saw something horrible or something horrible happened. It's because somebody said something to me, and my own brain just put a knot in my stomach. And I couldn't even sleep that night. I was like, how am I going to move? Because I'm actually thinking, God wants me to move back to New York. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm like, this is insane. So I'm, I'm, I go to bed. Me and my wife are going to bed. We're like flipping out. Like, man, what are we gonna, how, are we gonna, how do you sell a house? You just bought it. How do you get rid of cars you just bought? I, said, I don't want to get, I just bought a Corvette. That was my dream car. I didn't want to get rid of that and go back, because you can't have a car in New York City. 
Everybody knows that who lives in New York City. <laughs> Such a nightmare. So anyway, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, this is, this is not going to, this is not going to work. So I go to church, to the church I'm in Texas. I'm, I, you know, I, I was thinking, if this, this is such an important thing, why couldn't God just tell me him? So how did he tell the pastor and didn't tell me? If he had said to me, Mark, I want you to go back to New York. <laughs> I would have instantly done it. Instantly. If, if I had been walking down the street and somebody said, hey, the Lord told me to tell you, you should go back to New York. I most likely would have done it. But nothing happened. So I drove to New York just to hang out with the pastor for two weeks. I hang out at his house and... and I just, it just wasn't right. It wasn't right. So I came back, I came back to Texas and I'm staying in the church that I'm down there and they're telling me, because I told everybody in that church, they were, they were telling me, hey, the Lord wants you to stay here in Houston. <laughs> so now what do you do, right? That's what you do. So now I'm, I'm staying in Houston, but what happens is that this is when my, uh, the spin doctors come back together again. Because I wasn't in spin doctors during this whole time. I had quit. So now they call me up, hey, we want to play again. You know, we have a, a gig in New York City. Would you like to do it? And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And when I told the church, it was like, that's the devil. <laughs> the devil's trying to keep you from going all the way through because you just came back and now he's trying to pull you back into the world. So what I did, what I basically did was I joined, I got back with the spin doctors and everything was, and this is, actually this was September 9th, 2011. So, after we did the show, I went to my church, and I stood, up in the, I stood up on the thing, whatever, and the pastor's praying over me, and he's prophesying, and it's this horrible prophecy. He's like, you're not supposed to be down in Houston, Texas. The Lord's saying, you're not supposed to be a video guy. You're a musician, because I stopped playing bass to film for the church or whatever. So you're not supposed to be doing any of that. And the prophecy was, I got so angry, because we were supposed to be there for the entire week in New York City. We were supposed to be there for the entire week. So when I got, I got so angry that I basically told my wife, drive me down to the village so we can get a slice of pizza and then take me back to Texas right now because I am not staying in this city at all. Get me the hell out of here right now because I was super angry. So we got in the car and we got home Tuesday and that was 9-11. So now I'm thinking, this is unbelievable. I just, I just, if, I felt like I was spared this hard because I didn't, you know, I didn't get to see it in real life and I think I would have flipped out if I had seen that. So now I'm thinking, I just couldn't understand why this was happening to me because I'm still, remember, I'm still a Christian. I still believe in God. So I avoided the whole 9-11, the, you know, the stench. I was calling my friends. They were telling me about how horrible it was. My mother told me she had to walk, like, you know, all the way back to Queens. And I just couldn't get the connection. So I'm going to fast forward now to the part where my wife left me. And so she's gone. I'm still in the spin doctors. And... I'm having these conversations with my Christian friends in New York because all these bad things are starting to happen to me. And he was like, dude, you disobeyed God by not coming to New York, and now he's punishing you. So I said to him, I said, so you're saying that if I move back to New York, everything will be peachy and creamy. And he was like, God will bless you. I said, I will die first. I said, there's nothing on this earth that's going to make me move back to New York. I don't care if I lose a leg or arm or nothing. I will die before I move back to New York. And I said... And that's when I started to hate God. At one point, I loved God. I was like, I love you. I love you. And he was like, I used to, every night, I remember this, every night before I go to bed, I would curse God out. And when I woke up, I would curse God out again. And then I would call my friend and tell him I did that. And, you know, to a Christian, that's like, you know. And he said, you know, whatever you do, man, do not blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And of course, instantly, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> I mean, I went off on the Holy Spirit. Like, there was no way I was going into heaven now. Absolutely no chance. I was like, forget it. So anyway, now I'm sitting there, and I'm in a deep hatred. I got a whole wall full of, I got to tell you one thing I left out is that I was a super crazy Christian. Like, I was praying 24 hours a day. I was reading all the time. I was studying everything. I mean, I was reading my Bible. Like, I was, I was hearing my Christian friends. So I said, dude, you're not reading your Bible. What's wrong with you? That's, what are you just making that up? I was, like, totally into it. And then afterwards, things just didn't make sense when I started, and I actually started studying science. I, for some reason, I got into Einstein. I don't know what happened. I can't remember the actual connection, but I just got this whole trip to the, into the speed of light. And 
When I started studying science, I started studying all these branches of science, and religion and science didn't make sense. And what also didn't make sense was the fact that I was just getting hammered by life. And the reason I was getting hammered by life because I was living in a fantasy world. If I had to just not try to follow God, everything would have worked out great. So after a while, I was like, you know what? There is no God. There absolutely can. Either God really hates me or there is no God. And the thing I chose was there is no God. And then I started going back and listening and, re and rereading those things in the Bible, like Adam and Eve. And I was like, let me, there's two dude, there's like a two people in the, in the garden. They're both naked, walking around, and there's a snake that talks to them. <laughs> now, like, if it was a parrot, that would have made sense to me. <laughs> you know, but it's a snake. And then it's telling them not to eat from the tree of knowledge. But you want the knowledge. So they want you to be stupid. And so they eat from the tree. And then I'm thinking, you know, God's been around for a long, long time. You know, he's supposed to be, you know, what's the word? I forgot the word. Somebody give me the word. Omnipresent, potent, or whatever. Yeah, whatever that is. And then, uh, so that means like six trillion, bazillion, bazillion, gazillion years before God even made Adam and Eve, he knew he was going to make two people. They were going to be totally stupid. They were going to completely disobey him. It was going to completely ruin the entire planet. And then all these problems would happen. It, I just couldn't understand that. And then I thought about God even actually making the earth. You know, it's like, who would make a planet like this where it, the, all the time it's trying to kill you? You know, it's always trying to kill you. I mean, I watched that horrible thing in, in uh, Indonesia with the tsunami. And I'm like, how is this even possible? How is that even possible that you could be living on a beautiful planet and then you could just be on vacation sitting in the sun and you're looking and this huge wave is coming at you. And what do you do? And like I was telling a friend, a friend earlier, it would be like if I took a playground for my kids and I just put nails in it and snakes. <laughs> the pool has acid. You know, I mean, that's, that's exactly what the earth is to me. It's just like, and then on top of it, you've got people trying to kill you 24 hours a day. I mean, who would make a place like that? It doesn't even make sense to me. So then I'm thinking, all right, this is getting crazy now. So what I did was I basically threw all my Bibles away, forgot all about Christianity, and I became an atheist. But I didn't know I was an atheist. I just thought I didn't believe in God anymore. I just said, I don't believe in God anymore. And when I told people that, it was almost like I was a child molester or, a, you know, some evil person. How is that possible? Look at the beautifulness that God did, you know, look what he made, the plan he made. How did God make the earth? And how did God do, 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 do? look at the flowers and all this stuff? And I'm like, dude, there's a black widow in those flowers. <laughs> I mean, how do you get past that? I said, I go in my backyard and I've got six trillion fire ants. I can't go back there and talk to them. Yo, what's up, guys? How y'all doing? You want some chicken? You want something? As soon as you get near them, they, they just bite you. One night I was sitting, one day I was just sitting there, totally in a daze, because I'm in this house by myself. And I got, I'm, I'm, I'm watering the, my garden, I mean, the, the, the little weeds. <laughs> Because I don't believe in weeds, by the way. I think that's ridiculous. It's just a plant. It's not a weed. So I'm watering everything that was there, and I had this stinging sensation on my hand, and I looked down, and my whole hand is covered in fire ants. I didn't even do anything to them. <laughs> but now I did, because I, I, I made sure I, I, I killed more fire ants than God has killed in the Bible <laughs> in that one single day. So I'm sitting up here today, and I'm just like, you know, David Silverman, and what's the guy's name? Ken? Lucanen. By the way, I'm really terrible with names, so don't flip out. So those two guys kind of hooked me up, and I mean, I'm thinking, there was one point I was on, you know, who would have thought, like, I'm on, the, I'm on the ground getting the Holy Ghost, and who would have thought I'd be speaking at an atheist convention 30 years later? You know about the Holy Ghost. <laughs> that thing is unbelievable. And you know what it is? When I was on the ground, I always was thinking in my mind, you know, this ain't, something's not, I'm not getting this. Like, I'm just going, you know, you feel like you're going along with the crowd. But I was always thinking, like, how is this happening? You know, and today I can't even make it happen. I can't get down there and get the Holy Ghost. 
I can't do any of that stuff anymore. I don't even, I don't even want to do it. So what I do now is I spend most of my time on Facebook. I mean, that's how I got discovered. Ranting and raving as much as possible. <laughs> Debating my friends. I don't even debate. I don't believe in the debates because you can't debate reality with fantasy. That's impossible. <laughs> so what I do is, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you have to remember, this is really freaky for me, so. Just. So what I do is I basically make fun of my friends. <laughs> that's what I do. And then they get really upset and they unfriend me. <laughs> and I'm really glad about that. I've lost a lot of, you know, Christian friends. I mean, they were just, the thing, the thing about Christians I've, I've noticed is I call them fake ass Christians. Because I'll, I'll put something on the Bible, you know, I write something about the Bible and they'll defend it. But they don't have any knowledge of what, they haven't even read the Bible. Like my friend, I told him, I said, dude, do you have more dust on your Bible than on the moon? Because you never open it. You have no idea what's going on there. I actually read it, because that's what turns you into an atheist, <laughs> is reading it. Now, I have to tell you guys something. I have to tell you guys something. When I first, came, when I first got out, I'm, I'm reading about, I'm seeing, you know, uh, Tyson and Sam Harris, is it, and what's the other guy's name, Dawkins. I'm seeing all these people for the first time. And I'm seeing the stuff that I was thinking they're already talking about. I'm reading it in a book. I'm like, that's what I was thinking, because the whole thing about the earth being so messed up. After I thought about that, I saw Tyson talking about the exact same thing, that this planet is, you know, this isn't a perfect planet. I mean, no intelligent design would make a planet like this. And then I see people like Ray Comfort with the banana. <laughs> and i tell you something. I had no idea that the banana was cultivated to look like that. I just didn't believe what he was saying, so I looked it up on Wikipedia on my own. I was like, I gotta, this, this can't be true. So I looked it up and I was like, what an idiot. So I go back, to, I go back to, to YouTube and of course, you know, people are making fun of him. And he retracted it. There's something wrong with that dude, by the way. <laughs> him and that other guy, Kirk Cameron. I'm gonna tell you right now, those two people really, really annoy me. When, I mean, I love that Australian, New Zealand accent. I had a girlfriend from there and I used to go, oh man, you sound so beautiful. But when I listen to Ray Comfort, I want to pull my face off. <laughs> There's something wrong with him. There is something, see, he's a scam artist. He cannot be that stupid. <laughs> he's most, here's the other thing too. When you see all these high dollar uh, evangelists on television, they're all atheists. They just figured out a way to make money. <laughs> Not, I mean, because if you really believe in God, if you really believe in God, you wouldn't be acting like that because you would be afraid that a bolt of lightning would strike you down. So you know those guys are scam artists. Collecting all that money and just driving around. If, I mean, if it was me, I would give all the money away, every drop, because I know by next week, God would just replenish it. <laughs> but they don't do that. So for me, they're just a bunch of scam artists. How much time do I have left? Five, five minutes? Oh, good. Okay, good. So, everybody, I would like to really, I'm, I want to explain to you that I feel very honored to be up here today. This is the most amazing thing ever. I mean, I, I wanted to be a preacher. That's what, that was going to be, you know, speaking, you know, come on, people, you got to believe in God. Anybody who wants to get saved, please come up front right now if you want to receive. Does anybody want to receive the Holy Ghost? Okay. Saved from hell, what's wrong with you? Nobody? Nobody? Fine, fine. That's what I wanted to do, but thank God that didn't happen. <laughs> there was a wonderful question passed up, and it's something that uh, I, I think a lot of us um, struggle with not tearing our hair out. So you are, you, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so it's easier for you then, all right. Yeah. I can Damn it. This hair. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, have a wonderful talent, you've worked at it, you, uh, you've studied. Um, how do you feel when your fellow artistic people, musicians, writers, whatever, um, First thing they do when they win an award is go, I'd like to thank Jesus for the single, beat my mama in her face, you know, <laughs> thank you. Um, it, it's all for you, Lord. Um, it may 
makes me want to seriously do things that I will not admit to wanting to do on camera. How do you handle that? Because you know how hard it is. Okay. Because that really makes me mad. All right, she, she, this question is a really good one because this is what, this was pissing me off beyond anything else. Because I practiced eight hours a day when I was 15 years old, every single day to play the bass. All the time, that's all I ever did. And then, now I'm, in a, I'm, I'm teaching in this place where, you know, I'm teaching in a room, it's, it's a public room, so people come in and out, it's the bass room in, in Rock and Robin in Houston, Texas. And people come in there and they see me playing, or teaching, and they go, wow, man, you, God gave you a gift. And I'm like, dude, a gift is something you get for doing nothing. I practice all the time. So how is that a gift? I said, if I was just sitting on my butt all day and I woke up and it, and it was like, you know, on, on South Park, you know, I just woke up and there was a bass in my basement <laughs> and I could just go down there and start playing it, that would be a gift. But you're not token. <laughs> no, I am. In the spin doctors, I am token. <laughs> I'm the token black in spin doctors. As a matter of fact, if we go, like, when we go to places like Colorado, they'll say to me, dude, did you see any other black people here? It's just you. <laughs> like, I'm getting ready to go to Norway, and I'm sure I'm going to hear the same thing. But it's, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll add a little bit more to that. It's just like, it's like when you, I got Christian friends like, you know, the Lord just blessed me with a job. I said, what were you doing? He said, I was walking around, you know, for two weeks, I got, and I finally, you know, God gave me a job. I said, dude, everybody goes out and looks for a job, eventually we'll get one. If you were laying in your room on the bed and you were like this, and the phone rang and they was like, Ding, hello, hey, the Lord just told me that to give you a job. So come down this week on Monday. We got a job for you, the Lord told me. That would be a miracle, <laughs> right? That, that, would be, that would be proof that you know, God's working because you want a job, nobody knows who you are, this is, this is the reason why I'm an atheist, because that stuff is lunacy, man. You know, <laughs> we talk about, I have to use my brain now, so it's like, you know, and I'm using it. And one more, one more thing. We have to be active. I, wasn't, I actually wasn't going to be active, but now I am. Which means I'm going to attack my friends even more than I did before. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody. Mark White.